a failed attempt to photograph reality. How foolish of me to have believed that it would be that easy. I had confused the appearances of trees and automobiles and people with reality itself and believed that a photograph of these appearances to be a photograph of it. It is a melancholy truth that I will never be able to photograph it and can only fail. I am a reflection photographing other reflections within a reflection. To photograph reality is to photograph nothing. Photographers, of course, believe that the photograph tells them exactly what they see. There's a certain kind of truth in reality. Uh, I don't particularly believe in reality. I, I find reality a contradiction of experience, ultimately. So in my photographs, I like to not tell you what you already know, but to contradict you in terms of your expectations. And things are queer. Each photograph contradicts the photograph before. It presents a premise that you're looking at a bathroom, and then the next photograph shows you this giant foot in the bathroom. The contradiction the comes in the size of the foot and being in the bathroom, so right away it tells you something's not quite right. Uh, of course, believe the camera the then in the third photograph begins exactly to move back a little bit further and you actually see that it's a man. Uh, I don't particularly believe in reality, I, but it still doesn't make any prediction of experience sense. ultimately. So in my photographs, I like looking at to not tell you what you already know, but to contradict you. As the series continues, you realize that this photograph you were looking at and things are clear. Each photograph contradicts the photograph before. Again, that photograph contradicts the photograph before. You see a big thumb in the book. Again, the camera moves back, and you see it's actually a man who is standing in a, in a passageway, and you're looking over his shoulder at this book. Um, and eventually, the camera keeps coming back, and suddenly the photograph that you're looking at is in a frame. The camera again recedes, and you see that the frame is close to what looks to be the top of a sink in a bathroom. And then ultimately, you see that you're looking exactly the same photograph you saw in the beginning, except that this time you notice that the same photograph, the same photograph you saw in the beginning, people Lee. begin to see that you see the same but they believe the same photograph you saw in the beginning, but Lee. Was all the same same photograph you saw in the beginning, but Lee. And ultimately, you see that you're looking exactly the same photograph you saw in the beginning, but Lee. In 1965, I went to Brussels to photograph the Belgian surrealist René Magritte. I was a big fan of Magritte and very much moved by the way his mind presented contradictions and ideas. And to me, it was liberating because then I could photograph ideas, and, and that was essential to my growth as a photographer. I was a big fan of Magritte, and this particular contact sheet is interesting to me because it has many ideas about Magritte in the photographs themselves. Um, there are simple ones like uh, Portrait of Magritte asleep. He was, uh, every day after he would have his lunch, he would then take a nap on the sofa. Uh, and I, I love the, the view of him asleep because so many of his pieces were really dreamlike. Another one of the photographs which I like very much is a double exposure I did outside of the house against the very textured wall. And the wall, the texture of the wall, of course, comes through the image, and it is very reminiscent of those paintings he did where everything in the painting was made out of stone. But most of all, my most favorite photograph is the one of Magritte sitting at an easel, which is also a double exposure without him being there, and he stood off to the left, and fortuitously, you could see his, him standing in the mirror, as I did the first image. And then he sat down in the, at the easel, and of course, being a double exposure, only those parts of him which were against dark values came through on the photograph. And I really love this picture because I think good portraits show you not what somebody looks like, not the geography of their face, but actually what they're about. And I think this is very symbolic of what Magritte's work was about.
she was divorced and her children stayed with the husband. So I decided that she probably saw her children more in her dreams than she actually did in real life. So what I did was take a sofa, which is a very strong horizontal line, and set it up against the window. She actually did in her life. The children around her slightly blurred, all at different angles. So when the actually did in her life, it seems like she's off to the side, and the children are all floating in different directions. But in fact, they are the ones who are sitting flat on the floor. The one who is on. She actually did in her life. She actually did in real life. But it's my emotional life, my fears, my dreams, and all of these things are much more real to me than any stranger's face I might photograph. I think the ones you try to photograph the essentials, and in the category of essentials, we find all of those very basic deep emotions. When I photograph childhood things, when I photograph the ghosts of childhood, I, I try to get to that basic emotion that a child might feel, as I attempted to do in when I photograph childhood things. When I photograph the ghosts that of childhood, I, I try to get I, to that basic emotion that a child might feel. At no of doing a photograph which was to be called The Unfortunate Man. Uh, the story is about a person who was not permitted to express his love by the government. And in the process, his hands become transformed and to hide the ugliness of his hands, uh, he begins to wear shoes on his hands. It's a very difficult thing to talk about because the essentially man could not the idea is about homosexuality and it had been declared illegal by the government. It's a very difficult so thing to talk about because essentially some of the idea is about homosexuality. He began to wear shoes on his hands to hide his shame. It's a very difficult text to talk about because essentially the idea is about homosexuality. He works with respect. The unfortunate man It's a very difficult thing to talk about because it has essentially declared him the idea is about homosexuality. Slowly, his fingers began to touch his hands. It's a very difficult thing to do. He began to wear his hands on his hands. The idea of homosexuality it never occurred to him to break the law. The untouch of the hands. It's a very difficult thing to do. He began to wear his hands on his hands. The idea of homosexuality we spent our entire lives looking for mirrors, leaving the illusion to reflect them there, and comforted by the reality of the appearances. It never occurred to him. Unfortunately, people are seldom what they appear to be. And what is seen is printed by the receiving appearances. It never occurred to him. Sure, relation to the man. It's a very difficult thing to talk. He began to printed by the reality. In my my entire life, and not once did they ever reveal themselves to me. Break the untouch of the man. It's a very difficult thing. My mother, my father, and my brother. Printed by the reality of the appearances. And it never occurred to him. Charles Street, Manhattan. The untouch of the man. My father was about 50. He began to write his by the reality of the appearance. And my mother never heard him to break the law. The untouched. I started out just photographing my mother and my father. He was by the reality of the appearance. And my mother and I began then to work with my brother in various combinations. If you knew the real secret of my find a picture I finally chose to print, the one I chose to use, is very much more revealing than it looks. Printed by the reality. I went back to this photo and my mother and I wrote a text to accompany it. The text was called a letter from my father. Printed by the reality. Our relationship. And my mother. Printed by the reality. And my mother. As long as I could remember, my father always said to me that one day he would write me a very special letter. But he never told me what the letter might be about. I used to try to guess what family secret the two of us, what a last share, what mystery, what intimacy could now be revealed. I know what I had hoped to read in the letter. I wanted him to tell me where he had hidden his affection. But then he died, and the letter never did arrive. 
and I never found that place where he had hidden his love. My father was about 50, brought in by the reality of and my mother I did a sequence, at least 20, called Death Comes the Old Lady. And I was trying to take a photograph of what happens actually at that point of death. I used my grandmother, who was 85 at the time, and died six months after I took this picture. And I used my father as the image of death coming to the room. This blurry shadow comes in and touches her on the shoulder. And at that moment, she disintegrates into a kind of dust. In some way, I think that this is getting near the truth of that moment of death in the sense that we kind of, I think we rather fall into a kind of powder that floats into space and then disappears. My father was about 50 and brought by the reality of and my mother was about 50 and brought by the reality of and my mother and because I find death so and scary, it was the perfect choice. Of course, the question is, what do you do when you get to Egypt? It's very difficult to photograph places that are photographed at least As a boy, I always built model cities, and it seemed to be very appropriate for me to do. Of course, what I like about it best is that when you bring the camera low with them close up to my pyramid, mine is much larger than theirs. Of course, what I like about it always best a very important thing for a man. Low with them close up to my pyramid. Of course, what I like about it best is that when you put the camera low with them close up to my pyramid. Of course, what I like about it best is that when you put the camera low with them close up to my pyramid. Of course, what I like about it best is that when you put the camera low with them close up to my pyramid. Of course, what I like about it best is that when you put the camera low with them close up to my pyramid. Of course, what I like about it best is that when you put the camera low with them close up to my pyramid. Of course, what I like about, of course, what I like about, of course, what I like about.